You've built a uh, media empire collaborating with content creators who are underrepresented and undervalued, which I truly respect um, in the world of business, finance, entrepreneurship, and real estate. Uh, so we want to welcome to the Mecca right now, Rashad and Troy of Earn Your Leisure. Um, I love, I always love these shirts, the assets over liabilities. We're going to get to that. But first, um, with the time, the little bit of time I have in between um, you guys speaking more truth to power to our people out there, I want to do, you know, so y'all are up top, guys. We in D.C. Now, I'm, I'm from the DMV, Prince George's County. Get to know it. I'll drive y'all around if you need to. Or, but you in <laughs> D.C. right now. Um, shout outs to the Mecca, Howard University. How, how is, is this like first time? You've been here before a couple yeah, we times? Did, we did have been here um, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was during Spring Fest. Okay. Yep. yep. Spring Fest. So that was that was cool. I used to live here. I used to live in um, Baltimore. I went to school in Maryland. Really? Where'd you Where'd you go? UMBC. UMBC. You're a um. No, don't tell me. A retriever. Yeah. You're retriever. a retriever. Yeah, I was there for two years. So yeah. I was over. You know, I was coming here for like homecoming, and that's back when they had H two O. Yeah. H two O Club Love. Of course. Shout out to Abdul so, Market yeah, Taz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you you you. Okay. You're like yeah. you you might be a cousin. You could be a cousin. Okay. You you might just be a cousin. What about you, Troy? What nah. I, I grew up. Up in uh, New York, went to school in New York, um, but like you said, been down to, to D.C. A, a bunch of times. I used to take um, the kids in the summer, the program we were running. Yep. I made sure that they came here, so we, we would visit the, the Capitol, obviously, and then we would go to Howard to visit, to show them what schools look like. We had like 14-year-olds, so the vision was like, rather than walking in as freshmen, yeah. stepping on the campus for the first time, let's put them on campus at 13, 14. So they could actually see what it looks like, understand who does what and what the mm -hmm. Bradshaw office is and what's, you know what I mean? Like, so we just wanted to expose them. So we've been there a few times. That's good, man. Yeah. Well, welcome, welcome home, welcome back, second home style. And yeah. so since y'all are from the up top area, yeah. okay, I wanted to do um, a play, take a play off of one of my favorite songs from Fifty Cent, which is que uh, Twenty One Questions. Let's do it. So I have Twenty One Questions with Earn Your Leisure. How about that? Love it. Okay. Love it. Love now, it. Love it. These are random questions. Okay. These are questions that come from uh, folks when I said I'm about to talk to, to EYL. They were like, ask him this. And then some of them are my questions and others are uh, my producer beast. These, some of these are his. Okay. I'm not going to tell you which ones. You ready? Now, you don't both have to answer. It could be who at one, two, or, or both. Okay. okay. Gotcha. All right. Here we go. Number one, have you ever interviewed someone and thought, he lying? <laughs> 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 Um. Yeah, definitely. You you can have some time, some some suspicion sometimes. Some suspicion. Some people exaggerate. Some people. Some people exaggerate. You know, situations. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I think we've interviewed people, and I don't know if they're lying, but they may have been misinformed with what they knew. Mm, How's that? That's fair. That's a, those are good answers. <laughs> Very good. I like it. Name one industry you didn't know about after. Um, the interview or before the interview, but it made you want to get into it afterwards. Um, mobile homes. Mm. That's we actually just about to invest in in a, in a mobile home park, mm. and um, yeah, a great couple out of Chicago. Their name is um, Byron and Shanice. So when we first met them, I, we didn't all I knew mobile home. I was thinking like trailer parks. Mm -hmm. That's all I knew, like eight miles, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like I never knew anything about it. And then I realized that it was actually a real estate investment. Mm -hmm. And it was actually pretty profitable. And you can invest in mobile homes. You can invest in mobile home parks. So that was a whole education, actually, just learning from that episode. And then, like I said, we actually, you know, became investors now in a mobile home park. So that was like a full circle moment for us, for sure. Yeah, I think trucking was one of those, too. You know, we're from New York. We see trucks on the road all the time. Not once did we think, like, there's money going past us. So that's a business going past us. And so when we did the episode with um, our brother Alex Good Energy, um, and he was just enlightening us on the, the aspects of how the logistics work. We were like, oh, wait, we, we could do this. And yeah. so he's held our hand and we actually uh, got an 18 wheeler. And so a lot of people, you know, when they see that 18 wheeler, they always tag us and say, we spotted you. Um, yeah, so that was definitely one of them. There's, there's a bunch, but like those, obviously, the mobile home parks is something we're going to be investing in now, but the trucking is something we've done already. All right. What's the most money you've made in a business deal? It could be around a the, you know, a guesstimate if you. In a business deal? In a business deal. Uh, seven figures? Seven figures is the most you made? Wow. Yeah, seven figures. In one deal? Yeah, well, it's a con like a contract. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What is uh, the next question? Is, what is the most money you've lost in a business deal? Um, maybe not in a business deal, but just in a business. Um, I don't think we really lost too much money, but we probably lost maybe like... 
we did we tried to do an app mm. a few years ago and I think we put up like thirty thousand dollars for the app mm. and it, it never it never got off the ground mm. so that was just like a complete waste of money so that that probably is the most we've lost in trying to like start something that didn't work mm. it was like thirty thousand yeah. dollars good lesson though thirty thousand dollar lesson from <laughs> a, a valuable lesson all right, next question. When did you know EYL was popping, popping? Like, at, what was the moment where you like, oh, we, oh, this is this is real. This is it. Um, I think early on we did a we did a networking event in in LA. It was like 16 weeks into the podcast, and it was just like spur of the moment. Like we just announced it like on a Friday, and it was on Monday, and um, it was packed. People was coming from like San Diego. People was coming from like. Wow. IE, like they was traveling like an hour and a half and that was early. So I'm like, all right, this is something that's big because we're on the other side of the country and, you know, people are traveling and they knew about it. And like I said, all we did was just put a post on social media. So that was like a, a early sign that it was going to become something big. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's one of them signs. Uh, I remember just people writing in the comments of some of the posts early on and it was just from like different parts of the world, like Tokyo, Kuwait. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, wait, they're listening to us there. Yeah. And so it was like, oh, we did this something here. But that was definitely one. When we were in New York, we had another networking event um, at BK9 in Brooklyn. Mm. And uh, it, it was, the restaurant was packed, so people started coming out into the street. And it was wow. like, as soon as we walked out, and I forget, I was with, um, I was with Ab. And uh, this gentleman was like, I just took the bus from Philly. I just got on the wow. bus just now to come see y'all. And another gentleman and his, his uh, young lady were like, I just got on the bus from Rhode Island. And I'm like... Okay, this, yeah. this is something different. Like people are coming, they're gravitating toward this information. How long had y'all been doing a podcast before you did that event? The the LA event was like four four months. Yeah, that's Maybe. the first quarter. You know, yeah. within the first so, quarter, you. Yeah. And so the 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 Brooklyn one was like two months after that. So that was in June of 2019. So in less than a year, y'all was like, oh, yeah, this is about to we going know. up. Steve Harvey was good. <laughs> okay. Um, Keeping it moving, what is one of your favorite interviews? And one, because I always, I hate when people ask me, like, what's your favorite this or your favorite artist? I'm like, I got too many. But what would you say is one of your favorite? Yeah, it's a rest of my own, actually, from Baltimore. Derek Falcon is his name. And that was actually episode 11. And that really changed the trajectory of Earn Your Leisure. Like, that was the first one where he was the first person to actually break down his business model in very detailed format. And it just kind of became like a, a sensation. The numbers didn't really go that crazy on YouTube, but it was just really, really popular. Mm. Like, and, and everybody just loved it on social media. And that was like, you know, the first one that really kind of set us off. And then there was a couple other after that that kept the consistency going. But he, even to this day, like he's one of the, some of the, the best information that he provided was very, very valuable information for anybody, not just for restaurant owner. So that was definitely one of the highlights of, of our journey so far. I love that you know the number, number 11. Yes, let, me, let me write yeah, that down. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I remember that one. He didn't do, did he do the pop-up? The um, He wasn't doing like a pop-up brunch or something before he started his restaurant, was he? Uh, was he doing pop-up? I, I know the restaurant was only open for, for brunch and dinner for, yeah, on the weekends. Okay, and then yeah, he kind of grew. Yeah. That's, okay. So yeah, that's my favorite episode too. Episode um, it's probably because it's, it's the most important episode, like mm. for the reasons he just said. But obviously most people were like, oh wait, what about the Steve Harvey? Like Steve Harvey is one of our favorites. Yeah. Um, I think Wall Street Trappers episode is important. Mm. Uh, Ian's, Dunlop, he's our partner. And our, our brother who's here with us right now, MG the Mortgage Guy. Definitely. Um, just to see where they've grown from those episodes and to see how they've you know created a for themselves in their industry and how they've become super relevant and the go-to people um, for their respective fields is, is incredible. Well, I think Steve Harvey's the most important episode. Really? Yeah, that changed the game and that's probably our best episode in my opinion as far mm. as like at, like from start to finish mm. it covered every basis it was just an excellent conversation it was, it was almost flawless yeah. I think that that's the best interview that we've done and that's the most important one because that changed that cha a few things changed things for us but that changed things for us. Like, you're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you're out you're of here. You're in orbit. You're, now you're out of the yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, like, <laughs> so we went from going all the way up. So we knew we was going up, yeah. then all the way up. When we, we walked out the, when we walked out the interview, it was great. We looked at each other, and <laughs> we, we were just like, I think we might have said at the same time, like, yo, our lives ain't going to be the same again. Oh, that's After awesome. this moment, like, the interview didn't come out yet. Yeah. But the way it felt and yeah. the conversations we had prior to and post-interview, we were just like, yo, I, you're ready. Like, our lives ain't going to be the same. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. And that happened this year, so, like... Facts! And I'm thinking, <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking, like, y'all are 
I mean, right now, I mean, to me, the Steve Harvey thing was just like I, I expected. I was right, like, right. I wasn't even surprised, and it was, it was excellent. It was, it was excellent. But I'm thinking, wow, like how much more can your lives change? Your lives have changed so many times. Now we're in orbit. What is orbit? Take me to space, man. What's that? What is that like when you say you knew your life, your lives would change at that point? Like, how so do you feel it has since? I just feel like you know, like, well, when we met Steve Harvey. You know, um, we spent like two hours with him before the interview. Mm. Then the interview was like two and a half hours, one of our longest interviews. Mm. And then we spent like an hour with him after. So we spent like probably five, six hours with him and just talking. And he just really took a liking to us and he told us that he wanted to do business with us. And, you know, that was the first time that we really had that connection on that level with somebody that, that mm. you know, there's really nobody bigger than him on the entertainment side for our culture or just any culture, really. Like he's like, our version of Oprah right now, like, yeah. you know, Steve Harvey, like, you know, if you look at what he's doing. So just kind of knew that, okay, this is going to open up a lot of doors. And then it's just, from there, other people start to see things. Mm -hmm. And then it just becomes like a ripple effect. So I felt like, you know, that opened up a lot of opportunities from him directly, but then just from other people in the space. So it's like, even though we had Tyler Perry at InvestFest, and yeah. when Steve Harvey asked him to come, he was like, oh, I already, I seen the interview. I'm familiar with, I've, I've watched the interview. And like, so many people have watched that interview that's like really, really successful people. Yep. So, you know, like you said, we were already, you know, rolling. Mm -hmm. And then every after that, it just kind of like accelerated yeah, everything. Yeah. Like, it just put it on, on a rocket ship. So, I mean, like, you know, just having opportunities to, you know, go to Abu Dhabi. We just yeah. came back from Abu Dhabi and, and you know, talking to the, the the government of Abu Dhabi and different things of that nature and, you know, being around all, everybody out there and, you know, really having a relationship with Diddy. Like, you know, we, we've, we've been doing business with Revolt for a long time, but mm -hmm. just actually meeting him, spending like a couple hours with him at his house in Miami and just, you know, developing a real relationship with him, like, you know, getting his, his number, like communicating with him on text. So these are the kind of things where it's like acceleration, like, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's like we were at a nice pace. And then we just started running. Yeah. yeah that's it. That's it. I think the opportunity piece is, is the key, mm -hmm. right? So they even like that access. When yeah. you get, it's a lot of things are about access. Yep. And the beauty of what you guys are doing is you're creating lanes of access for other creators and other potential investors and people who want to know. You're providing them with access to something, and then you're getting access, even more access to the things you want. That was one of the things that I actually we were on a call last night. And I was just saying that like. Yeah, we're kicking down doors for every, you know, we're building buildings for every door they, they close on us. Mm -hmm. And so, like, once we get in the door, like, when we get the information, now we get to share it with the community. As we're learning it and doing it and applying it, people are watching it and they're saying, all right, well, we can do it too. That's why I said, like, when we were talking to Puff, it was like one of those things, like, we realize there's levels. Yeah. Right? Like, so at this level, we're seeing opportunities and we're seeing, we're getting exposed to things, but at his level, he's exposed to so much more. Yeah. And so that, when we say, like, we're out of here, now it's <laughs> out of here to the next level and out of here to the next level. And as you keep spiraling, and that's one of the things Tom Perry said as well, is like, as you keep spiraling up, right, you're going to see there's more opportunities, there's more barriers though. Mm. And so, like, if we can obviously kick down those barriers and make people aware of them. Now the gateway is a lot clearer for more people that look like us to achieve and excel in those, in those uh, positions. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's keep the 21 questions rolling before I run out of time, man. These are, this is great, though. I'm, yeah. in, I'm enjoying this. Um, okay, uh, this, was, this is actually a question I had. When you first started out, whose house were y'all filming out of? My house. That was your house? That still is my it's house. It's a very nice decor. You know, it, I always would Appreciate look like, that. where are they at? Like, they in a dining room or what? Where yeah, 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 that's, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's my, my dining room. And the funniest thing about <laughs> it, it, it was like, we were, were first uh, five episodes that we did, um, we didn't put on YouTube, and they were originally in his uh, office. Mm. Um, and then we were just kind of sitting in my dining room, and he was like, yo, let's just do it here. Like, I like the yeah. paint. The paint is good. The paint was so Which is crazy, because I, I, I was going back and forth with my wife about that paint. And I'm like, this has to be the paint color before we even moved. So I'm like, yeah, this is great. But um, yeah, most people didn't realize it, uh, that it was our dining room, because it was just like, it looked like it was something that was set up. But yeah. every time we would record, I'd have to send my kids out. Because uh, I'm like, we can't have any noise. So I'm like, yeah. babe, you got to take the kids out. You got to go somewhere. Uh -huh. We're going to record. And then the pandemic happened, and it was like, oh, wait, we can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so we had to shift from my dining room now to where we record, which is uh, in, in the lower level of the, of the house. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, low overhead. Okay. That's key. Low that's key. Overhead low overhead is, overhead is key. That's fair. And I, and I wanted, the reason that I think that's an important question is because so many people who are trying to start podcasts, they put a lot of money into up front before they even film anything, right? They, they're they trying to buy locations or buy this or be in these spaces. And a lot of times it's, the, it's those basic, like, where are you at naturally? Where are you comfortable at? Yeah. That really can make a difference in terms of, like, just how natural the and authentic the podcast comes off. Yeah, it's one of those key things. I, uh, it's like a life mantra. Like, start where you are, yeah. use what you have, do what you can. Mm. So we, Say that again, man. Somebody yeah, can yeah. Again. start where you are. So, like, we didn't have to go anywhere. Like, we was at, we was at my house. Use what you can. At the time, we were using our cell phones. Like, we had his iPhone, my iPhone, and we would, like, ask somebody to come to use theirs for the third angle. And then we had these little shotgun mics that sat on the table. And we're like, all right, that's what we have. We, got, we grew to other things, but that's what we had. Mm-hmm. And we did what we know how to do, right? We have conversations every day for the past 25 plus years. It was nothing for us to just talk to the mic, but now to hear people be receptive to it and realize like, wait, this isn't commonplace conversation. And now we get to share our expertise and our likings and we get to bring people on. It was like, all right, this is, this is something special. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, um, let me keep it moving. Name one item you splurged on when you made your first million. Um, I got a I got a presidential Rolex. Ooh. Same. <laughs> both two presidential. Yeah, 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 I think we both got them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still, is, is it still like kind of like special to your favorite, or or have you moved on? There's other Rolexes now. There's. Yeah, yeah. it's it's all the Rolexes. Oh, but yeah. that's, <laughs> That's still my. That's, that's still your baby. That's still my. It's like Nick when he, when he said my presidential. I wear it every day. It symbolizes. it symbolizes enterprise and like you know that means a lot. Like you know coming from where we come from is like you know you get a you get a Rolex. That's a, that's an accomplishment. Absolutely. Like, you know the presidential Rolex. That's like you know that just means that just it's just sentimental value on that. So yeah, yeah that's the first that was the first thing that I did. What do one of those run? I'm not I I, I know they're nice watches, but I don't it's a it's out of my price range so I wouldn't even yeah. look at yeah, it. Yeah, the one so the, just the regular factory one is 40. Mm-hmm. The ones that we have with like diamonds in the bezel, factory diamonds is 60. Oh, start is that like a starting or it's that's just, just that's 60. The price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 60 a piece. Wow, that's that's yeah. a I, that's a well, nice he, he bought his in the, you bought yours in New York. Yeah. So I bought mine in Florida, so there's no state tax. So I saved a little money. Ah, okay. Yeah. okay. There's always a lesson. There's always a lesson. <laughs> All right, speaking of which, so you guys talked about Abu Dhabi, so I'm not sure if that, this goes with that, but what is the best trip you've taken so far? It's tough, man. We have a lot of great trips. Um, this year, we went to London. And now, you know, London is just a vibe, man. I really, really enjoy it out there a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, they just really embraced us. We went to um, Africa last year. That was cool, too. We went to Nigeria and went to Egypt. Uh, we went to Jamaica. Mm-hmm. That was a great experience. So I feel like all the trips that we take, honestly, Abu Dhabi was great, Dubai. So it's just so many. It's too many. But each, each one is special for its own its own reason. That's but right. I think my favorite city that we've been to for Earn Your Leisure so far is London. Mm-hmm. I really like London a lot. That's dope. Yeah, I think I agree. I think it just depends on what the reason is. Mm-hmm. Like, I loved uh, Egypt because mm-hmm. my family was there with me. My kids got to see that. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our families were there. Yeah. So it was like we got to be when L.A. is a nice city that we, we our families got to come to that. Mm-hmm. Like, so we lived in L.A. for an entire month. The entire, oh, nice. the entire company lived in L.A. for a month, and we, our families were there. We were having dinners and barbecues and going nice. to the beach every weekend. Um, so that was cool. But, yeah, London London is just a special place. Um, it was my first time there, you know, and we were fortunate enough to be there twice. Once, we was just like, all right, this is incredible. But it was my first time in Paris, too, so it was just like a combination of things where we got to see Europe. This is my first time in Europe. I'm just like, oh, this is crazy. Yeah. This is, this is. And then going back there um, recently... For an event, it was like to see the people come out and the way they're receiving us. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just one of those things. So London will always will be dear to me. Oh, well, yeah. I got to take make book me a flight then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, did you ever experience moments of imposter syndrome on your rise? A lot of people speak to imposter syndrome. Did you guys ever feel that or relate to that at some point? No, I, I didn't personally. I can't speak for Troy, but I, I didn't. Cause I feel like you know. Um, we work for everything that we have, and I feel like we we added real value. And then I always kind of knew that it was going like kind of happen similar to. The, I didn't really know exactly, but I kind of already had an idea mm-hmm. that something was going to happen. Like I had a, a whole vision. So 
I wasn't really surprised. Like, you know, I kind of already expected it. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if imposter is the word. I feel like we've been on this path our whole lives, mm. right? Like, I know it sounds super cliche, but like he's a financial advisor. That's what he was doing by trade. Yeah. Like I'm a teacher, I'm an educator, right? So like financial literacy, like it makes That's perfect it. sense. We were yeah. already walking in our purpose. So it was never something where we had to feel like, wait, are we doing something that's not us? And I think that's what, what people gravitate toward. They just see like an authentic, authenticity when they see us because we are everyday people. Like we come from the people, we made by the people, mm -hmm. and we for the people. Um, so yeah, n never really. I mean, the only, th the only thing I would say is like, I would say the, not imposter, but like, how far can I challenge myself, right? Because now it's like finance is a new space for me, or it was, and it was like, I want to challenge myself. Let's see how far I can go with this. Yeah. And so like every day I'm reading, every night I'm reading, I'm <laughs> learning, I'm watching. Um, so it was like, yeah, this yeah. is a, yeah, let's take this challenge on. Let's see how far we can go. Absolutely. Have you ever almost fallen asleep or checked out during an interview? <laughs> Uh, I want to answer for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, I mean, I haven't fell asleep. I mean, because you naturally have a very laid back, <laughs> very laissez fair. And there have been moments where I've been like, are his eyes starting to close? <laughs> <laughs> or is he, like, is he, does he feel how I feel about this interview right now? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, nah, I feel like, you know, I just, I don't really sleep a lot. So I'm always kind of like a little tired. <laughs> And then, like you said, I'm always, I always kind of just have the natural <laughs> lower eyes anyway. But um, so it might look like that on camera. But <laughs> now, nah, definitely, sometimes you know, you know, it's just human nature. Like you know, yeah. sometimes some interviews are more you're more interested in. Like yeah. it's just like a person. Like a person might not be interested in an interview as an interviewer. Mm -hmm. It's your job to fight through that. But yeah. it might, you know, a person might kind of be like running around questions and not yeah. really answering the questions or giving long-winded, you know, nonsense answers. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, it's kind of like, you know, you might just lose, lose, lose interest mm, a little, little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that, that's fair. I think it happens, it happens to all of us. Um, okay. So I've got to get ready to wrap up. So I'm going to try to go through these last few questions as quickly as possible. Can we go higher with it? Okay. We're going to do rapid fire. fire. All right. What does your family think about all of your success? They love it. They happy. love it. Yeah, they're happy for it. At first, they were like, um, what's going on? You're not going to like teach anymore? <laughs> um, but now they understand what's happening. They get it. Yeah. Best lesson you've learned from a loss? From a loss? Yeah. Um, best lesson you learned from a loss? Sheesh. I don't know. I can't, that's, a, that's a tough question. A tough question? Okay, we'll skip that. That's fine. We could pass. We're, we're on schedule right now. <laughs> Name one person who has not been on the podcast that you really want to interview. Jay-Z. Ah, that's a dope one. Um, Wait, where's the camera at? <laughs> Talk to him. Did you hear that, Sean Carter? <laughs> <laughs> what is your most valuable asset right now? Most valuable asset? Mm -hmm. <sighs> I'll say my vote. Our most valuable asset is our creativity, because that's what that's what propels everything. Like you know, if everything goes away today, as long as we have enough creativity to create, keep creating. We con we creators, right? Content creators. That's what we do for a living is we create content. So, your your brain, I think, is the most valuable asset that you have. As long as you you are able to you know stay creative, yeah. be original, there's always opportunities. Advice you would give somebody who wants to quit their job? Have a plan. Mm, love it. What is a liability you would caution your audience about? A liability. Um, a liability I would caution my audience about is, um, you know, jury. Oh, mm. I feel like that's something that, you know. She's the one with a presidential. I thought oh, she was going to say that's something a, that's, else, that's, man. That's, 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 that's a good that's, 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 Those are going, those the, go up in value. The, role, that's, the Rolexes are an investment. Okay. Because they go up in value. Mm -hmm. But jewelry, like when I'm talking about jewelry, I'm talking about chains and yeah. bust down watches and stuff like that. that is, those are real big, you know, for our culture. People are interested in that, right? But they don't really have any real value. Mm. So it's like you spend a lot of money on that and then you try to, you know, you realize that, okay, I can't resell this. Yeah. You can resell it like on a street value if somebody thinks it's worth something, but you kind of, you know, it's not really worth anything. And you, mm -hmm. can, you can end up spending a lot of money on things that don't really have any real value. So Did diamonds, research? diamonds, diamonds, this is a little known fact. Diamonds don't really have any value. Mm -hmm. Diamonds, the value that diamonds have is what we put on it. Mm -hmm. But like gold has real value mm -hmm. since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. So it's like gold usually always appreciates. It always appreciates. Mm -hmm. And 
when you start to, you know, mess it up and you start doing diamonds and you start, you know, playing with things and, and having chains and stuff like that, like, like I said, it might look good, but it's probably not the best use of your money. Yeah, that's fair. Last but not least for the both of you, when did you finally know you had earned your leisure? I think it's still a process. Mm. Um, you know, I, I used to say when, whenever we sit down with Jay, our leisure's been earned. <laughs> okay. um, but I realize there's so much more. There's so many more people that, you know, we need to sit down with so they can share, you know, their brilliance. Um, but it's a process. It's a process. I, I, it, it, it used to be, right, like most people say, there might be a monetary value. And I think we probably would say that, too. Um, but we know the mission is much bigger than us. Yeah. And we know the value that needs to be brought and what it can do for our community. Um, so it's a process. Okay. I think like little baby say, so I ain't make a hundred mil yet, so I can't show you. Yeah, so you so you're earning your leisure is still in process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, yeah, yeah, still working. We haven't we haven't had time to really had too much leisure. I got you. Well, keep keep pushing, keep inspiring. Love what you've done. Been following it since the beginning. Thank you guys both you. for your time. Earn your leisure. It's not just a podcast. Now it's a whole media <laughs> empire. That is so impressive, yeah, man. Twice. Thank you for the time. <laughs> yeah, it is a whole empire. I respect it a hundred percent. So thank you, Rashad. Thank you, Troy. Thank you. And yeah, we at the Mecca. H U. You know. Come on, Bison. <laughs> All right. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you. Appreciate thank that. you. Appreciate it. That was all.